Happy Saturday and welcome back to another episode of the Account for Your Life podcast. Jay Moody, Healthy Accountant, helping you to account for your life today on the podcast. We're going to, man, we're going to just jump into an idea. I posted this Facebook yesterday and I'm going to talk about it today and why it's so important, especially for men, for, for people who are believers and who want to grow spiritually. Um, so look, if this is your first time catching the podcast, like the podcast, share the podcast, let somebody else know about the podcast. If you're watching on Spotify, um, I, listening on iTunes or Google, or even watching on YouTube, make sure you come back and check us out more and more. We post these almost every day. We used to we, we, we do them every day. Um, there may be a few times when we don't do them every day. So come back and check us out today. Why is why business is the best vehicle to grow spiritually. Why is that? And then, then we're also going to discuss, well, why is it? Because we got to ask why. Why is it that most people don't want to start a business? What has been the culprit that has put a wedge between them and the life that they ultimately desire? Today, we're going to talk about that. On the podcast and of course there's always scriptures that we can go to we're going to quote some scripture but look at the end of the day guys look the scripture the scripture the bible it's it's a book that if you read a scripture you got to apply it so today we're going to talk about the application of that and why business is the best vehicle to grow spiritually i've been a christian i've been someone who was indoctrinated into Christianity from the time I came into this world. Came into this world <clears throat> October the 19th, 1971. And from the time I came in, they, they <laughs> I'm not gonna say they put a Bible in my hand. They basically told me what I was to believe. Were you told what to believe at some point? Everything you know today is because someone told you to do it, because someone said this is how we do it, and because someone showed you this is what they believe, because someone probably was like, hey, this is better than that, or this is this is something you should participate in. Look, if you grew up in a family, then you were told to do certain things. It's nothing like it's nothing like when. When you say things like this, man, I've been like this all my life. Have you ever said that? I've been like this all my life. Have you ever said this is all I ever know? Have you ever even thought about, you know what? I don't think I want to change because, man, I've just been doing this thing so long that it just seems like it's embedded into me. Yes, 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 yes. We all, Listen, I don't say those things anymore because, because I've become aware. But I know there was a time when I said this is who I am. And because this is who I am, I may, I'm may i probably not going to change. I've heard people say this. Well, I've been like this for the past 70 years, so I'm probably not going to change now. Why wouldn't you change? Why wouldn't you change? So if we've been told what to believe, then how do you know what you believe? How do you know what it is, what's your thoughts versus someone else's thoughts? Have you ever heard the statement, there's nothing new under the sun? You heard that? Now that's been quoted, but I know Solomon said it. Solomon quoted that many years ago. There's nothing new under the sun, nothing. How could that be a true statement when we're living in 2024 and I don't know what time zone he lived in, but that was a long time ago. And he's saying there's nothing new under the sun from back then. I know we're gonna we're gonna get to this vehicle and growing spiritual. We just gotta set the context of what we're dealing with here, because because when we're talking about growing spiritually, people think go to church. Oh man, that's people think go to church. You know, like well, why aren't you going to church? Well, does going to church doesn't grow me spiritually, particularly. What going to church does or should do is just bring you around like-minded people. What if, 
me ask you this question. What if you went in church and you didn't feel like you were like-minded with those in there? It would be tough. That would be tough. But growing spiritually is not going to church. So what is growing spiritually? A few years ago, I was recommended a book. The book is called Business Secrets of the Bible, written by Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Rabbi, he's a Jewish rabbi, and he knows a little something about business. He knows a little something about the Bible or, or the scripture, and he knows something about growing spiritually. And it was in that book that I saw something that I never saw before. I had never heard it in church. I had never gotten an understanding of anything that he said. He said he said something that was more practical in a sentence that I was like, now I get it. See, because let's go to, let's go to the scripture really quick. I'm gonna let's quote one of the greatest scriptures text in the Bible when it comes to faith. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. What does it say? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So I, I was reading a book and I came to a place in the book where it says this. I'm going to read it. One of the Hebrew words for business professional is omen, omen, which means man of faith and shares the same root with the liturgical amen. Huh? Man of faith is the same as business professional? with no verifiable information that he would be successful in selling his wares, the merchant nonetheless purchases inventory. He then delights in selling out his entire inventory, even vital commodities like food or clothing in exchange for little metal discs. Instead of despairing about how he will need, feed and clothe his children, he has complete faith that whatever he wishes, there will be someone who will gladly sell him food or anything else he may need for those very metal discs. It is that faith, it is that faith that converts metal discs and printed paper into money. This faith gives currency value. Were he to trade on the basis of doubt and suspicion, he would contract no business at all. It is chiefly his faith that makes possible his profits. Why business is the best vehicle to grow spiritually. So, Man of faith in Hebrew, which none of us knew if you're American um, and you're not Jewish or you did not study Jewish culture, you we wouldn't have known that business professional means man of faith. But it makes sense because to start a business means that I see something that's not being done. And because I see something that's not being done, then I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go out there and do it. I'm going to go out there and create it. I'm going to go out there and, and because I have the belief, the umption, the conviction, the courage to say, you know what? I can do this thing. I can create this new thing that's not out there so that I can then use this thing to exchange with people so that people can then get something that they want and need. So when you think about business, it's actually, it's testing your resolve on whether or not you really, 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 really believe what it is that you said you want to do, as opposed to being indoctrinated in the system that you live in, the cultural societal mechanism, which 
that's not my phrase, but I, I actually I'm using that phrase from someone else. The cultural societal mechanism that basically indoctrinate every person to believe that they need a certain kind of education, that they need to go out and get a certain job, and then that will take care of their family. But if you're living in 2024, what you have discovered is that we're all coming up short when it comes to having a job, when it comes to actually being able to do things in the marketplace. You're like, wow, I need more money. But my job's not going to pay me more. But when you become a business professional, here it is, Rabbi Daniel Lappin, in the book, <laughs> Biblical Success Secrets, he quotes that in his culture, in the Jewish culture, a business professional is a man or woman of faith. Oh, but what is faith? We just quoted faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Here's the thing. And then Romans 10 and 17 says this. It says, now faith comes by hearing. You got to hear something. I shared a story yesterday. I was on a, um, I was on a call um, with a husband and wife. And, um, you know, they want to really, they want to get their finances. They just want to go to a new level in their life, you know. Husband has a business, wife still works a job, um, they got some real estate. They want to do some big things. And I asked the question, I says, hey, what's been blocking you from this? See, what's interesting about the question, they didn't really know what's blocking them. I said, well, it's all this stuff. Like, I grew up in the same environment as you guys grew up in. What's been blocking you and what's blocking me well, used to block me, is the mechanism that was used when you was very young to get your thoughts. Mechanism. There's a mechanism out here. But it's the same type of mechanism that if you, if you want to grow spiritually, you say, you know what? I'm going to have to step out on faith. And so I had to share a story. I shared a story with them. Um, husband says to me, he says, Jay, tell the story Tell my wife the story about when your wife left her job. Now, I'm already in business. This was in 2016. I had been in business since 2002. So, that, so I'm in there for a long time. Now, here it is. But I had just finally turned over my life and my business to God. Turned it over. And then God comes to me and says, ask your wife to leave her job. And I'm like, you bugging out. This doesn't make any sense. My wife is making $95,000 a year. That, that's taking care of some stuff, bro. So my thing is not has not replaced her salary and it doesn't make sense. Plus, she she gets her because she works at that company, but that school, she our kids can go for free for college. Why would we do that? He says, Well, you already turned your life over to me, so you kind of have to do it. If that's what you, if, if you really, if you really trust me. I'm talking about growing your faith here, guys, in business. I'm in business. And that's when God says to me, he says, all right, as you leave a job, don't worry about it. Just ask her. So we, so I'm telling a story about how, how it happened. And we talked for three hours on a Sunday afternoon. It was September the 15th, 2016. We talked for three hours. We were no closer to her saying yes. And we're in that third, literally coming up on three hours. I'm like, we got, I, I'm done with this. And I, I just blurted out a scripture. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> you ever been in a situation where you you say something, but you know it was good, but you can't remember what it was? That's the situation I was in. I, I'm, I'm in with this story. I just quoted a scripture, and I just remember her saying, well, because you said it like that, I guess I have to do it. And so here it is. Remember, it's not me. I'm listening by faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. The word came to me and the word told me what to do. See, when you're in business, you find yourself alone a lot of times. You find yourself in situations where you don't have nobody else to talk to. I didn't have anybody else to go to and say, hey, man, I'm dealing with this thing. Because when you're when you're dealing with turning your life over to 
God himself, you don't get to ask other people what they think. This is how your faith grows. And because you don't get to ask anybody what they think, then you have to go on hearing the word of God in your own body. So I heard God's voice tell me that. And after the scripture, she says, yes, I'm going to do it tomorrow. It's Monday. She goes to work and she's like, OK, OK, OK. You know, she's 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 feeling antsy because I'm telling the story. She's feeling antsy about doing it. And, you know, I'm telling the story about how how my wife left her job. And she 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 was afraid, just like I was afraid, because we're giving up something big time. But we're listening by the word of God. This is what it says in Romans 10 and 17. Then. She sees her boss. Boss was in the office all day. Boss comes in. Boss at the elevator. I'm sorry. She comes out of the bathroom. She sees the boss. Hey, boss, I would like to talk to you later. The boss looks at her and says, oh, would you like to put your resignation in today? She had never, ever talked about leaving this job to anyone outside of the conversation that she had with me the day before. On, at that moment, she knew this was a move of God. And she turned in her resignation. That was September the 16th, 2016. Wow. That's all I can tell you. Wow and wow. See, when you're in business, it forces you to actually have faith. It forces. Because without faith, <laughs> without faith, like you, you can't, it's not that you can't please God, you can't even please yourself because you'll come up short without faith. Faith forces you to do things that, that you don't have evidence of. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so you have not gotten the evidence yet that your business is multi-million, that your business is helping thousands and thousands of people, that your business is changing people's lives, that your business is able to, you know, fund, fund different movements and fund different, like, you don't have any evidence outside of your belief, your faith, that this is true. You know, it's, it's so interesting because when God, hey, what's up, David? Man, man, I'm just seeing this message. When God comes to you to do something, what happens is it it, it, it always seems contrary to what anybody else would do. And, it, you know, I remember, I remember some years ago, I was reading the Bible and I came across a scripture. I think it's Matthew, in Matthew chapter seven. Um, you ever heard this text? It says, why does the gate? that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life, but few travel the path. When I read that, I'd heard about narrow is the way and how, man, it's hard. It's hard. I heard that it was hard. This is going to church every week. It's hard to do right. It's hard to do, 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 to do all the stuff. I'm like, it's, I grew up believing it was hard. But when I read that text, I said, man, it's easier to go the narrow path than it is to go the wide path. Why? Because at least the narrow way, I'm going to get to where I ultimately want to want to be, which is I'm going to get the, I'm, I'm going to have a life and I'm going to have it more abundantly. But I had to go in. The, I had to go the way that nobody else was going. And everybody, listen, everybody's going this one direction. And they're like, hey, come with us. I'm like, I ain't going. I'm not going with y'all. I'm only going in the direction that God is sending me. And so when I read this book, Biblical Secrets by Daniel Lappin, and I saw in the book that it says, if a business professional is a man of faith, I said, man, I chose, I, I chose well. Do you know it took, it took me being, I got fired. I knew I was supposed to have a business. But I didn't know how to do anything. I got fired from a job. I got fired from a job. I got laid off from a job. And then, and then, then the Lord, back then, I can't even tell you it was the Lord because I, I, I mean, I was, I wasn't a man of faith. I just had some. 
I wasn't a man of faith, but I just had some. I had a little bit. That's what the word says. All you need is a little bit of faith. Faith, you, you just need a mustard seed side, just so tiny. It's so small that no one can see it. But you can feel it. We can feel it. So business is the best vehicle to grow spiritually because it helps you grow yourself. It helps you to grow the thing. Like, like, like literally, you can't take cues from everybody else. You actually have to take cues from the one who gives faith. You can't take cues from that guy. And, you know, it's interesting because we're coming up on, we're coming up on eight years and my wife um, walked out of her job and here's what I can tell you in that eight years. <laughs> See, what God told me is, yeah, you'll get free tuition too. You don't got to worry about that. I got a son that's about to graduate this coming year from college. Think about that. And we didn't have money saved up for college. God said that I will take care of that. You don't ever have to worry about that. And literally, I remember we did not have, we did not have the money set aside for college. It was a new thing. We had to, oh, well, it's going to cost us an extra $1,500 a month for his college. Then, two years later, <laughs> two years later, my youngest son starts college. Now it's like, oh, shoot, that's going to be another $1,100, $1,200 dollars a month. So we're almost like $2,500, $2,600 a month extra just on college payments. Like, oh. Lord, where's that coming from? Don't worry about it. I got you. We missed the payment. We paid all up. We paid it all. Like, it, and you know, it's interesting because I'm like, where does money come from? He says, man, I got money for, I, I got, I got, a, I got a solution for everything you need, but you got to go out on faith. I'm almost done. I'm almost done here. You got to go out on faith. So when you choose to go into business, you automatically, you're accepting a call. And if you're a person of faith, then it's even better because you don't have to sell yourself on having it. What we do have to sell ourselves on is that no matter how it looks, no matter what obstacles show up, being connected to the one who gives faith is our biggest opportunity in our biggest job. That's what we say. That's what we say. I can't see it, but I know it. There's nothing going to stop me. And I remember back in 2016, when my wife came on, I said, you know what? We're going to be, we, we will grow this business to be the world's greatest, most successful accounting organization, helping people to account for their life and their business. Here's the thing. How do you do something like that when you don't know how to do it? I heard one of my coaches say recently, as he was teaching the concept, he says, you just got to take the next step. You got to take the next step. You cannot ever not take the step. You just, no matter how it feels, no matter how challenging it, it you know, it just kind of looks, you just take the step. And by taking the next step, what we what we invite, we invite the success to us because we 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 are removing, we are removing fear. You know, that's the one of the biggest culprits that keep people from actually starting business and growing is fear. Fear, and then this last one, competition. We got to get rid of fear and competition because I am not in competition with anybody. No one can be me and I cannot be them. I have been made. You have been made for something very specific. And you don't have to compete. I don't care if, any, I don't care if someone's doing exactly the same thing. Do you know how many tax strategists there are today? There's tons of them. But you know what? I'm more than that. They can't be me. So because I'm more than that, I'm a... My thing is, look, I can I can help people grow personally and in business. Yeah, tax strategy is a tool in my belt. I'm telling you, most successful helping people to account for their life and their business is exactly what God told me. 
And that's why he had me doing this podcast called Account for Your Life. So look, business is the best vehicle to grow spiritually. If you want to grow spiritually, start a business. And when you start a business, like you just you just got to know that my faith is what's going to get me there. No matter what's going on, I'm taking a narrow path. I'm going to take the path that God's leading me. And no matter how it looks, I'm going to always take <clears throat> the next and the best step. So, man, guys, that's it for today. Um, business is the best vehicle. I love it. And I'm just so honored that I'm partnering with God to do something amazing for him because he put it in me. And you too, like I, have a have a call on your life. Keep pressing towards your calling because I know. I know your calling is big. Don't allow any anything to get in the way of what it is that God is calling you into. So, guys, that's it for today. Um, this is Jay Moore, the Healthy Accountant. I help people to account for their life and their business. And I will sign off now. Make sure if you're watching this on Facebook, comment, like, let somebody else know about this. Also, if you are not subscribed to the YouTube channel, Jay Moore, the Healthy Accountant, subscribe to our channel. And we will see you on the next episode. Peace. This has been the Account for Your Life podcast with your host, the healthy accountant himself, Jay Moore. Until next time, make it a great day.